Now let's consider the Welsh Terrier's neck and body. The neck is of moderate length and thickness, as seen here, and is slightly arched, sloping gracefully into the shoulders, which are long, sloping, and well laid back. The front is straight. Shoulder blades should be flat and smooth. The set of the shoulders allows for free and easy movement in front. This bitch's neck appears longer and thinner than is desired. This dog's neck is too short and thick, leading into steep shoulders. This dog has the proper moderate neck and well laid back shoulders. You can see that the forelegs are straight and muscular with good bone. Once again, you must feel for this substance. Pasterns are powerful and upright, contributing to the impression that the Welsh Terrier is standing on tiptoes. The feet are small, round and cat-like, with thick black pads. It's a good idea to examine the feet closely by picking them up. The terrier is a digger, so nails should be strong. They are black in color. Note the dew claws are removed on both front and rear feet. The body shows good substance and is well ribbed up with a level top line. Here is a correct body with good substance. The body should give an impression of strength with well sprung ribs. Notice that the loin is strong and moderately short. There is also good depth of brisket. From the front, this dog is excellent with good bone. The chest is of proper width and depth. This dog is rather narrow in front. His front legs are too close together. This bitch is out at the elbows and is towing in. She also lacks sufficient fill. Here is the correct Welsh Terrier front, exhibiting good bone and substance. The standard says that hindquarters should be strong and muscular, like this, with well-developed second thighs and well-bent stifles. Hocks are moderately straight, parallel, and short from joint to ground. This dog's thighs are weak and narrow, which is not desirable in a working dog like the Welsh Terrier. Here's a dog that's too high on hock. This may produce weak propulsion from behind. The hocks should be well let down like these to give the dog plenty of push and drive. Be certain not to confuse the terrier's taut, set-to-go stance, seen here, with sickle hocks, which are bent or curved rear pasterns. The square appearance of the Welsh Terrier is partly due to its tail, which is docked to a length approximately level with the occiput. It's set well up on the back and is carried upright or slightly tipped toward the head like this. You can see that there's a good curve of rump or shelf behind the tail. This dog's tail is too long, which mars the square appearance we're looking for.